What's going on, NBA Draft fans? It's your boy, Corey Tulba, the NBA Draft Dude, the Wolf of Ball Street, your favorite draft analyst, favorite draft analyst, here with another mock draft post-lottery edition. Congratulations to the Orlando Magic, Oklahoma City Thunder, and Sacramento Kings for moving up. It offers them intriguing opportunities to take franchise-changing players. There's a lot of movement in this mock, a lot of intriguing players, a lot of depth, and a lot of chaos. And that sound means that the Orlando Magic are on the clock. Jabari Smith Jr. is a really intriguing fit with the Orlando Magic at pick one. Jumping up in the draft to take a six foot 10 inch sniper shot over 40% from three, absolutely deadly from distance in a variety of ways, can hit it in transition, off the catch, even off the bounce. He needs to work on his finishing near the rim, but he's got a killer mid post game where he could face you up, hit turnaround jumpers, and he has two way potential because he is an, an absolute freak athlete out on the perimeter, guarding out there, gets low, is is aggressive, plays with fire and passion. He is going to ignite the Orlando franchise, just bring something that they're missing, which is elite shooting. They need that around their core, but him slotting in in between Franz Wagner and Wendell Carter Jr., playing off of Jalen Suggs and Markel Fultz and Cole Anthony is going to make for a really exciting fit with the Orlando Magic. Orlando passing up Chet Holmgren is a godsend for the Oklahoma City Thunder who tanked their way into a top three pick moving up in the draft. Chet Holmgren is everything you want. Conventional wisdom says he should be the number one pick. He had a college season on par, according to the advanced stats, with Zion Williamson and Anthony Davis. Just an absolute monster Ekinzaga. I get that he's skinny, but this dude swats everything near the rim. He's scheme versatile. He can guard out on the perimeter. He can play and drop. He can hard hedge and recover. He does it all defensively. Offensively, he has so much more in his bag that he is going to show in the NBA, especially with guys like SGA and Giddy finding him in his spots. He's a guy that could stretch the floor. He's got a little bit off the bounce, and he's going to show that at the next level. He finishes everything near the rim, and he's a competitor. He's got shit to him. So yeah, he's skinny. Yeah, Jokic and Bead, they're going to back him down and body him, but the kid is going to get stronger himself. He's going to be an absolute all-NBA potential player. I love the fit with OKC for Chet Holmes. This is an easy decision for the Houston Rockets. The top two guys were off the board, so they are going to take Paolo Boncaro out of Duke and pair him with Jalen Green to form an absolutely deadly one-two punch. Paolo Boncaro is the modern NBA. He's 6'10", 250, and handles the ball like a guard. He is going to step in the court day one and be able to go get buckets. But the thing that you love about him is the playmaking feel. He passes the ball like a guard at times. The kid has a little bit of Carmelo Anthony, a little bit Detroit Blake Griffin. You see shades of some really impressive top tier NBA players with Paolo. The reason that he slid to three though and wasn't the number one guy is because he gives inconsistent effort on both ends. You know, sometimes he won't be involved in the offense. The other times he'll set up for jumpers and defensively sometimes he'll take plays off. But if he puts it together and it clicks for him, he might be the best player in this class. Game planning for Paolo and Jalen Green sounds like an absolute headache for coaches in the future. Easy decision here for the Houston Rockets. Pick four is where the draft gets interesting, and the Sacramento Kings are going to immediately shake things up. They're taking Keegan Murray, the advanced stats god. I saw Keegan in person. The kid is locked in. I love his demeanor. The kid is just a winner, man. He's the versatile 6'9", two-way forward that the modern NBA loves, and these guys are the guys that are having absolutely tremendous playoffs, and that's what this is all about. Can these guys play in the playoffs? Keegan Murray can play in the playoffs. He shot it at 40% from three. He can get it in the post. He plays defense. I think that this kid is one of those guys who he may not be the superstar, get put on House of Highlights every day, but he's the guy that's going to affect change in your franchise. And you pair him with De'Aaron Fox and Demonis Sabonis and Davion Mitchell, and you're really starting to build something solid in Sacramento. So I know that consensus is probably saying, you're not taking Jaden Ivey here. Sacramento Kings already played the three guard lineup with Halliburton. It didn't work. So taking Ivey here, although it seems obvious, just doesn't seem like the move considering that experiment failed to live up to their expectations previously. So I think that they're going to take the modern two-way forward who's going to get it done on both ends. Yeah.
And at number five, that leaves the Detroit Pistons to take Jaden Ivey, maybe the most explosive guard in the draft. The quickest guy on the floor end to end. Absolutely ridiculous bounce. I saw him throw a monster windmill down in person. It's like watching an alien move on the court. He shot it better than expected. He does need to work on his pull-up mid-range shot, a shot that, you know, they're going to force him into in playoff scenarios. But you see a little John Morant. You see a little Zach Levine. And I love the pairing with him and Cade because I think that he could play on and off the ball. But I also think that he's a guy that allows Cade to play off the ball a little bit more and not have to make every single decision. Jaden Ivey, with all of that space, is going to be a nightmare mismatch in the NBA. The Pacers are going to select the mystery man of the draft, Shaden Sharp, pair him with Tyrese Halliburton, and form a devastating backcourt for years to come. Now, the Pacers are going to have to be patient because Shaden Sharp took a year off from competitive basketball, and he's making the jump to the pros. You saw guys like him, the explosive buckety guards, Anthony Edwards, Jalen Green. It took them at least to the All-Star break to translate their games to the NBA and the speed of the game. This is going to take him potentially even longer because Anthony Edwards played high level college one ball and Jalen Green played professional ball in the G League so you have to be patient but this kid can get his bucket as well as anyone it's so smooth it's so effortless his bounce is crazy I think that this kid has a potential to be a 25 point per game scorer down the line the Pacers getting a steal at pick six now, part of me thinks that this pick might be on the move, but for the sake of the mock, we're taking Jalen Duran for the Portland Trailblazers. Yusuf Nurkic is expiring, and Jalen Duran is a guy that could step in and give the Blazers something that they have been lacking. Legitimate interior presence. Somebody with elite athleticism. Elite measurables and it's just 18 years old a guy who should be preparing for his senior prom right now this is a kid who already looks like he's 25 what is he going to look like when he actually is 25 he looks like he could be you know a modern Jermaine O'Neal he has a little bit bam out of bio but he's gonna protect the rim he's gonna be a guy that you could dump the ball off finish everything a, a rim runner a lob catcher a partner for Dame to just set him good screens and make his life a little bit easier as a big man the Pelicans all of a sudden are loaded and adding AJ Griffin to their insane core of players is a godsend for this franchise. You're adding AJ Griffin and his elite off-ball shooting to CJ McCollum, to Brandon Ingram, and to Zion Williamson. I think that AJ is also going to show that he could play a little bit more with the ball in his hands at the NBA level, something he did a little bit in high school. But he showed at Duke that he could also be an off-ball threat, just catch and shoot and cutting off ball. The defense is going to take a little bit of time, but AJ is one of the youngest players in the draft. I fully believe he's going to get back to his athletic self that he showed himself to be in high school and turn himself into a potential steal at pick eight for the Pelicans. At pick nine, the Spurs taking Jeremy Sohan from Baylor. They're looking down the line and they're thinking, we did it once with Kawhi. Can we do it again? Six, nine, seven foot wingspan, built like a man. The kid has all the potential in the world. Uh, his shot needs work, but you have Chip England to do it. But the kid handles the ball like a wing, like a guard. He showed passing chops, and defensively, he could do it all. And the, the Spurs need more wingy, switchable fours who can kind of guard up and down a lineup. They have a ton of guards already. There's a log jam there. So Sohan fits and can just slide right in to all of those players that they have. And he's so young that you could bring him along slowly, develop him, and get that coach pop tutelage to bring the most out of his game. Benedict Matherin going to Washington is an excellent fit. He can slide in next to Bradley Beal, be a two-way guy who's just focused on shooting off movement, shooting off ball, cutting, getting out in transition, and defending on the other end. Keep his game simple. But then he also offers potential because I think that he has a little bit more to his game and he'll be able to develop a little bit with the ball in his hands peak if he hits maybe you're looking at a guy that looks a little bit like Victor Oladipo but even if he doesn't he's still a, an extremely solid two-way wing who slots in perfectly next to Bradley Beal
And the New York Knicks fans have no reason to boo this year because landing Johnny Davis is a major win. Davis had himself a combine measured in at nearly 6'6 in shoes with a 6'9 wingspan. The guy scored almost 20 points per game this year for Wisconsin, had to do it all, had more of a load on his shoulder than anybody else in college basketball. Needs to work on the consistency of knocking down the three ball, but the way that he got his own shot, the way he stepped up in big moments, 37 on Jaden Ivey in Purdue. The way he played defense, I think that this kid has the potential to light New York on fire. He has the personality and the competitiveness to be a Coach Thibodeau guy. New York, stand up. And OKC cannot be any more thrilled with their draft. They started with Chet Holmgren, and now they're getting Dyson Daniels at 12. The G League Ignite guard from Australia, 6'8", 6'11", wingspan, played point guard for the Ignite, and now adds another monstrous, big, versatile, two-way player to their lineup next to Josh Giddy and SGA. I love that the fact that this kid improved his three ball down the stretch, shot almost 41% from three over his last 10 games. He makes plays, he's smart, he's intelligent, he's a two-way guy, might be the best perimeter defender in the class, and he just adds an, a spectacular element to OKC at pick 12. Now I think that Charlotte is playing a little bit of chess here while everybody else is playing checkers. They know Cleveland behind them is already set up with big, so they're not taking a big, they're not doing the obvious thing. They're taking Malachi Branham from Ohio State. Absolute sniper, on or off the ball. His synergy numbers are off the freaking charts. The kid was ridiculously efficient. He reminds me of Chris Middleton in the way he gets his shots. He can do it out of pick and roll, out of isolation, and I think he could be the guy that helps Charlotte at the end of games. Lamella Ball is an unbelievable starter piece, can do it all as a playmaker, but I think down the stretch you need somebody that can get more efficient shots and I think that Branham is the guy that could help take some of that load off LaMelo's shoulder so he doesn't have to do it all himself. I think he could have a very Chris Middleton like impact in the clutch so Malachi Branham at pick 13. NCAA champion Ochai Baji. I love this fit for the Cavaliers. They have tremendous depth in their front court with one of the best young pieces in Evan Mobley, another spectacular center in Jared Allen, a franchise building block in Darius Garland, and now you're adding an elite role player to that core of players on the wing. Agbaji is an awesome athlete. He knocks down shots in a multitude of ways. He's not just a standstill guy. He's a guy that can shoot off movement. He gets up and down in transition. He's an absolute legitimate lob threat for Darius Garland to throw oops to. I love this fit. I think that Cleveland, it's time that they start adding their Mikael Bridges type pieces to their core and Agbaji is a great start. Charlotte back on the clock and they made an awesome choice taking Mark Williams from Duke, the kid stays in the Carolinas. Big man, 7'7 seven, seven wingspan, measured in 7'2 in shoes at the Combine. Blocked everything this year for the Blue Devils, and I think that this is what Charlotte needs. They needed to get LaMelo a legitimate lob target. They needed legitimate backline help for their shoddy defense. I think that this was a absolute no-brainer with Jalen Duren off the board. They absolutely crushed their two picks. Branham and Mark Williams was a home run. Ari Eason fell right into the Atlanta Hawks' laps. I think that this kid has all-star potential. Ridiculous measurements. He's got Kawhi Leonard-sized hands, and he was an absolute advanced stats freak this year at LSU. Coming in off the bench, he filled it up, even just looking at raw box score stats. He is the embodiment of the modern NBA. Tall, long, strong, and versatile two-way guy. I think the shot it came along. It's better than people are going to give him credit for. He needs to work on finishing with his left hand, but the kid has a lot of potential coming into the NBA. I like the way he plays. Tari Eason going to play with Trey Young. The Rockets are betting on potential here with Usman Jang. Usman Jang was a guy who had a disastrous start to his season, but absolutely turned it up to 11 to end the year. Looked like the second coming of Paul George, maybe just not as bouncy. But the kid was making plays out of the pick and roll. You could argue that he is the best pick and roll playmaker in the class at six foot ten, knocking down shots off the bounce, knocking down shots off the catch. The kid is just absolutely loaded with potential. I love the bet that the Houston Rockets are taking at pick 17 here. <laughs>
Yeah. Anthony Rendell is exactly what the Chicago Bulls need at pick 18. Sliding in in the front court, they need big front court guys. They had a lot of depth at the guard spot, but they need two way players in the front court. Liddell is an older guy who can hopefully come right in and contribute right away. Help Chicago try to get the, to the next step. He could play behind Patrick Williams. He could play maybe some small ball five next to him. He can slot in next to Nikola Vucevic. He blocks shots, he knocks down threes, and he defends on the perimeter and the interior. This is a kid that could absolutely help the Chicago Bulls as a rookie next year. Timberwolves are coming in on fire here with Terquavion Smith from North Carolina State. I love the bet they're taking on this kid. This kid may be skinny, but holy shit, can he shoot the leather off that ball, man. The volume of threes that he could put up. I love the fit next to Anthony Edwards, next to Carl Anthony Towns. He doesn't need to create his shot all the time. He can come in, shoot off movement, off the catch, but he could also make plays with the ball in his hands and knock down shots with the ball in his hands. He could be brought along slowly and play behind D'Angelo Russell. And then maybe if he starts showing some stuff and his body develops, he could take over for D'Angelo Russell when the Timberwolves are ready to move on from there. The kid helped his stock a lot with his performance at the NBA combine scrimmages. I love this pick for the Timberwolves. The Spurs went the safe route at pick nine, so they're taking a, a little shot in the dark here at pick 20. They're taking Patrick Baldwin Jr., somebody that I personally still have stock in, but I know that a lot of people have wavered on him. But 6'10", and he's got a smooth stroke. It didn't fall this year at Milwaukee. He's definitely not a number one option. He proved that, but I think that the kid has proven from prior levels that he can play a role off ball and be a big six foot ten knockdown shooter who could pass it a little bit and can move his feet, handle it, be a versatile role player. That's all that's going to be asked of him. He doesn't have that dog in him to be the primary guy, but that's okay. Not everybody needs that. But the Spurs are a team that I think can really coach him up and try to build his stock back up to what it was in the preseason. So it might be a long shot to a lot of people, but I think the Spurs know what they're doing here. Look, when you have Nikola Jokic on your squad, you can get guys that know how to move off ball, and that's exactly what Jaden Hardy does. This kid played against pros with the Ignite. He struggled early, but he made some major strides as the season went on, and he started understanding the speed of the game. And while his shot, you look at his raw percentages, it didn't look like the kind of sniper that you'd have expected him to be. The kid showed some real potential shooting it in a variety of ways. He doesn't need to create here. That was something he struggled with in the G League, but he looked really good playing in a Buddy Heald-esque role, and that's a perfect kind of shooter to play off of Nikola Jokic, so I think that he can come in off the bench, not worry about doing too much, just moving off the ball, catching and shooting, and keeping the game simple, playing next to the two-time MVP. Now, I, lo I absolutely love this pick. Jalen Williams is one of my favorite players in the whole draft. I've been high on him for a while now, but after his combine performances, it is no surprise that this kid played his way up into this part of the draft. He measured with a 7'2 and a half wingspan, 6'6", maybe the best pick and roll playmaker in the draft. Playing at Santa Clara, he didn't have a ton of eyeballs on him, but the kid absolutely balled out this season. I love how skilled he is, and I love how he can play with or without the ball. And when you're playing next to Ja, you need to be able to play without the ball. This kid was in the 97th percentile in spot up shots per synergy. So he can do a little bit of everything and, and he's got the intangibles that you love. This is a pure Memphis Grizzlies pick and man, do I think they're getting a steal. I love this pick for the Brooklyn Nets. Jake LaRavia was a guy that I got to see work out. I spent a couple of days with him. I interviewed him. You can watch that on the channel as well. But this kid has real legitimate tools. 6'8", versatile, played in the ACC, was guarding everybody from Paulo Boncaro to Caleb Love and Isaiah Wong. He's got a high basketball IQ. He can knock down shots. He is the perfect role player for the modern NBA. When you have Kyrie Irving, when you have Kevin Durant, you need guys to fill roles. This is a kid who has the size, the intangibles, the skills to do just that. So after his strong combine performance with his measurements and his skill drills, he bowed out of the scrimmages. Lends you to believe that maybe he got a promise. I don't know, but he seems like he'd be a great fit 
with the Brooklyn Nets. Full stops at Milwaukee for Ty Ty Washington. Washington was a guy that I think has the opportunity to way outplay his draft spot here because this is a kid who had a strong start to the year and then he got hurt and he started tailing off a little bit. But he has legitimate pull-up ability. I think the three-point shooting is going to be better in the league when the volume increases. And I think that Milwaukee really needs some backup help. George Hill is just too old and ineffective at this stage of his career. Career. So why not bring in somebody like Ty Ty Washington who plays a poise controlled game as a point guard. He had 17 assists when he finally got the keys to the car at Kentucky and he has real ability to knock down shots in the mid range and he has an elite floater game. So this is a kid who they won't have to rely on early, but I think it helped contribute and hopefully by year two is an absolute no brain contributor off the bench in the playoffs. I don't foresee the Spurs picking three guys in this draft. I see a package, but if they do, Bryce McGowan's is certainly a good bet to take it this part of the draft. Six, seven, and as buckety as you could get. This kid has all the natural talent in the world. He reminds me a lot of a guy like TJ Warren. Now he played in Nebraska team where there wasn't a whole lot of ball movement. There wasn't a lot of good decision making, and he was definitely a part of that, but he made major strides toward the, towards the end of the year. And the thing I love about him is that this kid attacked the rim with reckless abandon. He got to the line a ton. So despite the fact that he didn't shoot it all that well from behind the arc, my eyes are telling me that he's going to be a better shooter than the numbers indicate. He gets to the line. I think the efficiency will be there in the league. And San Antonio is such a good spot for him to really learn the game, something that I think he desperately needs to maximize his potential. The Mavericks are taking Blake Wesley here. They're betting on potential. Blake Wesley is an absolute blur in the open court. He is a menace on the ball defensively. He's got long arms, super quick, needs to get stronger and put on weight, but he is one of the best space creators in this class. Now, the problem is, is that he's super inefficient near the rim in a half court. He cannot finish yet, and he lacks touch, and the three ball is very inconsistent. But sometimes it looks pretty good. Other times, he misses completely, hitting the side of the backboard or not even hitting the rim, shooting up air balls. So he definitely needs time, but there's a reason that the draft community believes in his potential so much. And at 26, Dallas has the opportunity to get a guy who could take a little bit of pressure off of Luka and Jalen Brunson potentially down the line. With Kyle Lowry's health up in the air as he gets older and older year by year, the Miami Heat needs some point guard depth and they take Kennedy Chandler. I love this pick. I love the pace that Kennedy Chandler plays with, man. This kid can go slow to fast at the stop of a dime. He'll get you lean and he'll hit you with a hezzy. The shot came on towards the end of the year and I just love what he offers on both sides of the ball. He can play make on one end and then he uses his six foot five wingspan on the other to cause chaos, get in the passing lanes, be a pest at the point of attack. So yeah, he's small, but I think that he fits that heat culture and I think that bringing him in off the bench could add a new element to Miami's game where somebody besides Jimmy Butler could put some pressure on the rim. So this is a great pick for the Miami Heat. The Warriors at 28 Look, they want big, versatile guards who are gonna make smart plays and fit into their system, and that's what they're gonna get with Arizona's Dale and Terry. A late riser. This is a kid that we thought maybe a 2023 guy, but he put his name in the ring, and I think he is worthy of a first round selection. He reminds me a little bit of Tyrese Halliburton. He doesn't have the same three point stroke, but he shot it at a pretty good clip. The volume might not be crazy, but the shot is far from broken. I love this kid's energy. It's infectious. So Dale and Terry to the Warriors is a great fit for both team and player. Nikola Jovic to the Grizzlies is the right spot for him. I think this is a kid who showed a lot in the FIBA tournament, had a lot of hype coming into the year, and then had a really tough season overseas. But you see the flashes of the step backs, the self-creation, the creating for others out of the pick and roll, and he measured in nearly 6'11 in shoes, absolutely huge for a forward, allowing him to be a role player who doesn't have to do a lot of self-creating, can knock down shots, and just worry about keeping the game simple is a great situation for him to walk into and then 
And Ryan Rollins rounds out the first round. I love Ryan Rollins' game. This is one of my favorite players in the class. Had the opportunity to chop it up with him. And this is a kid who really impressed me. He showed out in the combine, made some really crafty reads as a playmaker. He scored the ball like we know he's capable of. And he had a monster block that got called a foul. But he had a really solid year at Toledo this year. He is a buckety guard. He wants to be CJ McCollum, Devin Booker, that kind of guy. And I think that he's fully capable of it. And OKC had a hell of a draft landing Chet and Dyson Daniels before this. So they take a guard who has some self-creation ability and the ability, I think, to come off the bench and maybe be a six man of the year candidate down the line. Thank you for watching the post lotto mock draft. We'll have another one of these things before the big night in June. I appreciate you all stopping by the channel. If you haven't yet, hit the like button and subscribe. It's somewhere down there. So make sure you're locked into the channel for more premium NBA draft content.